Hello, everybody. Welcome to the 13th episode of Coffee with KPP Live, the show dedicated to providing advice for life so that you can live richly and realize the life that you've earned. I'm Kyle Roy, financial advisor with Kentucky Planning Partners, joined with Ben Hopper, financial advisor with KPP, and Miles Mosqua, our Uber intern extraordinaire. <laughs> uh, it's been with us over the since the summer, and um, I'm really glad to have you guys. Awesome. Thanks yes. for having us. We're glad to be on. Mm -hmm. Glad to be on. Well, and this show, I think, is really important because we're going to be talking about college planning. So this show is really going to be for anybody who has children or grandchildren in high school or in college. This is going to be important for you because we're going to be talking about the competitive landscape on what it takes to get into college, quite frankly. Um, I look at kids in high school today relative to 20 years ago when I was going into high school and we knew we were going to go to college but we had no idea how to spell college or what we were going to study <laughs> whereas now kids are going into school not only knowing what they're going to be focused on but competition for scholarships for financial aid is it's greater than it's ever been we're also going to talk about let me see college funding how to pay for it uh, ben and Miles both will have, well, Ben has graduated, Miles will graduate both without any student debt. Mm -hmm. And they shouldered the financial responsibility themselves, so we're going to talk about that. Third, we're going to talk about really the number one goal of going to college, how do you get a job? They're both going to be employed, Ben is really an important part of the team, and Miles already knows he's got a job after graduation here at KPP, so we're going to talk about that. And lastly, we're going to talk about WKU, Western Kentucky, both Hilltoppers. Mm -hmm. Every time you say WKU, you have to say... Go Tops. Go Tops, that's right. Go Tops. <laughs> I have no allegiance. <laughs> so, uh, go Tops. Yeah, right. I, I hope my kids go there. After knowing exactly. you guys and the represent the representatives you've been for the that organization, it's just uh, been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so first, guys, let's talk about it. Uh, let's talk about the competitive landscape. What, what did you do in high school to prepare yourselves for college, to differentiate yourselves, and uh, tell, tell us about that journey because you've knocked the ball out of the park so far. Yeah, I think the, the first thing to remember is that it starts from a young age. You know, the, It starts when you're developing your skills, when you're starting out in elementary school even, middle school. Those early stages of education I think are very important because they ultimately, that's where you set up your study habits, that's where you develop your skills in different areas, that's where you get your work ethic started and that sort of thing. And then going into high school, then it's real, then it's real, it starts to, things start to weigh in on college results, college funding, potential for scholarships, when you've got things like your GPA uh, and your ACT scores, those are really the two biggest ones uh, that have been for the last several years and, and still continue to today when it comes to finding merit-based scholarships when you go to college, those automatic scholarships, so to speak, your GPA and your ACT scores are going to be the two, the two big ones. In some states, it's SAT. But Now, you said it gets real in high school. Mm -hmm. and, and speaking from experience, I don't think anything was real for me in high school, <laughs> right? And I, I say that half-joking because I, you, it's really hard to understand the importance of what you're doing in high school whether it's extracurricular or in school with your grades, how who planted that seed with you of it being important so you could realize what you were doing then mattered? Yeah, definitely my parents. I mean, that's those were the number one. The parents are the first people that that educate you and teach you and and build that drive in you and discipline you to to get where you want to go. So for me, it was my parents. Mm -hmm. For me, at least, it was it was definitely my baseball coaches and my parents. Um, one thing that I was taught from a very early age, um, Coach Aaron Beard, one of my lifelong mentors, always told me that success is a process, not a destination. So going through middle school, I mean, he coached me all the way since I was nine years old, all the way up till I graduated high school. Um, and he always made sure that, it, you know, when we were out on the baseball field, um, you know, that wasn't the only thing that we had to worry about, you know, it was it was making sure that we got it done in the classroom and making sure that our habits um, produced the kind of things that we were looking for and the kind of future that, 
you know, a lot of us were trying to work for at that point. And um, I couldn't be more blessed to, to have a guy like that in my life um, and trying to get those habits at a really young age, which I think um, really helped me now. And I hope that uh, to keep those going at least for the next few years. So. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. It's true. It's it's habits, right? We we right. choose what we do. We choose our decisions, and to have had role models like you both did mm -hmm. is extremely important because we know how easy it is to get caught up in the wrong crowd. You might look up to the wrong person, mm -hmm. and those habits that you form, and you may not even realize it, they become your normal. Mm -hmm. And if doing the least amount or just getting by, whether it's drug and alcohol abuse, whatever it is, um, it, it becomes your normal. So mm -hmm. so really great, great heartwarming shout out to the people that helped you guys. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's it's not easy. It's, it's really not an easy thing. Those things that you hit on growing up is, is difficult. And having those role models, having those people in your life that support that'll help you get you to where you want to be whether it's friends family coaches is extremely extremely important i think yeah so how competitive was it so when you were going into acts and sats what was it like i mean was there a level of competition or did you not tell your friends how hard you were studying so that you could <laughs> one-up them what, what was it like I, on that front i think with gpa and act I don't know if competition's the right way of looking at it. Because now, it wasn't competition yeah. for Ben because he was the valedictorian. <laughs> he was the valedictorian in no. his class. So there it's was not what no, I meant. There was no competition. It's not what I meant by that. There is a competitive nature yeah. to that, and so to speak. But because it's individual based, because it's whatever your GPA and ACT score is, corresponds to a lot of times what you'll get in merit based funding for college. I don't know if competition's the right way of looking at that, but what has happened over the last few years since I've been in school with universities is a lot of that funding has been cut back. So, you know, different struggles financially for states and for universities have caused those automatic scholarships, those merit-based scholarships to be slightly lower, even though still substantial. And you can still get, you know, big dollars, whether it be full tuition or full rides, those are still available for the, for the top. Uh, but it is more difficult. Um, there's not there's not as much funding in those departments in many universities as there was maybe when I went through before I went through in that time frame. So, right, right. Well, in terms of competition for me, at least, um, I would say that the ACT was definitely my biggest struggle uh, throughout high school. Uh, in the classroom, I really had a pretty good drive. Um, my routines were pretty set in stone throughout baseball and every time I get home, you know, I do my homework and kind of stay on top of that stuff. But the ACT was something that a lot of people put a big emphasis around. And I know nowadays that they're kind of taking a lot of that off. Um, I know Western is kind of leaning away um, from the ACT. I'm not sure if they're completely off of it now, uh, but the standardized test is kind of taking a little bit on the back burner now. But when I was going into college, it was still a very prominent thing. Um, and when I started, I did not have a good score. Uh, my first test, I was like, man, I got some work to do. <laughs> How but bad was it? You can tell everybody. I'll tell you now, I got an 18 on my first one. And <laughs> uh, for those of you that don't know, your highest score can be a 36. So that's about <laughs> half. Um, and it's not... Somebody's got to make the average. Though. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but from there, um, I was blessed to have my mom help me out. Um, she got me in on some uh, tutoring. And the tutoring was only 30 minute sessions. So most of the, the learning had to come outside of those sessions. So I had to make sure that I do a hundred questions every two days just to make sure that I get used to how the test is going. And I remember by the fourth time I took the test, I was working so hard to get it. And I ended up hitting my goal to just to hit that cusp to get some scholarship money from Western. Um, and I ended up being over 30 at some point. Wow. Yeah. So it was, uh, awesome. it was a big grind at the end of the day. But um, I think that now people are getting away from that standardized test and it's kind of more going towards that creative edge, trying to make sure that you're involved beyond the classroom, um, most, of, most of the stuff like that. But nonetheless, testing and making sure that you take, take the classroom seriously is, is very important. To to kind of expand on that, Miles kind of started to hit on things outside of the classroom, and I think that is extremely important, not just in high school, but certainly in college. Mm -hmm. And when you're when you're talking about getting prepared for college, and then in college when you're talking about getting prepared for your job and the real world, so to speak, 
being involved is is everything. It was for me, specifically WKU, uh, tons of extracurricular activity options, tons of leadership opportunities, whether it was Greek life or doing tours mm -hmm. or being involved in intramurals, you know, being involved is gonna is gonna what is gonna what be what sets you apart. Right. So, and really make you grow both professionally, working with people, uh, finding ways to do more than just focus on your academics, than just you know if you're in college going back to your room. That is that is huge and very important. Yeah, and I think that's a great analogy for life too. So. One of the themes that I just want to reiterate to the audience is hard work. You both worked hard in high school and you both worked hard in college. You had mentors to guide you through there. You didn't skate through. You make your own luck, right. quite frankly, it sounds like to me. And I, I just want to reiterate that to our listeners, and I can't encourage you enough to have your kids listen listen to Ben and Miles as well, because there's nothing about their career so far that's been easy, and it's been rewarding because of that. Would right. you agree? I would agree, definitely. Nothing, nothing in life that's worth working for ever comes easy. That's, that's right. Something that I definitely live by, and and especially your education. And mm -hmm. I think there are so many people out there that are fortunate to be able to have somebody else pay for college, and that's fine if you can afford that, but there are so many cases where even if a family can't afford, putting some of the onus on the shoulder of mm -hmm. the students helps them recognize, makes it real, going back to what Ben said, it makes it real. The value of that education can be much more much more profound mm -hmm. and it sounds like that that's the case for you guys. So let's talk about college funding. Since you guys have shouldered it yourself, Let's talk about how you did that because after talking to, to Ben and Miles, there are a lot of creative ways that you can think about or leverage, resources that you could leverage that I was never aware of. And I have four children from 15 to 5, and we're going to have to become very creative with our college funding, Michelle and I. So listening to you guys, I've been taking diligent notes. And uh, so tell the audience some of the things that you did once you got to college because well, it doesn't stop there. Right. I think the first thing to remember is there's more than one way to skin a cat, so to speak. So everyone's college path when it comes to funding specifically is going to be very different. The one thing, I mean, we've already hit on scholarships. Scholarships are going to be, you know, quote unquote free money. It comes from working hard, but scholarships are going to be huge. You've got the merit-based scholarships I hit on, GPA, ACT score. You've got specific scholarships that colleges might offer. They might be foundation donors, alumni might have sponsored at some point some scholarships. Every university out there is going to have this database that's available to its students. So finding those, it might be $1,000, it might be $2,000, it might be $500, it might be $1,000 recurring. And to dive in on that a little bit, what they were talking about before was, so once Ben and Miles got to college, so mm -hmm. once you're there, I was under the impression that you could only really get scholarships before you went. And I, mm -hmm. I thought naively that that was it. But once you're at college, there are going to be families, endowments set up for people in specific majors, mm -hmm. specific areas of study, mm -hmm. people from certain backgrounds or parts of the country where those families want to support them and help build mm -hmm. that legacy. And at Western Kentucky specifically, as I'm sure it's the case with schools across the country, they have resources to help you find those mm -hmm. scholarships while you're there. Absolutely. And you both leverage those. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. For me, um, at least, one of the things that I really looked into was the business college at Western. Uh, I was very involved. My professors were great to me my first couple of years, and I kind of looked for a way that I could get more involved. Um, and at least there, I was able to get a spot where you could do an ambassador program, so where if you do a certain amount of hours just helping and kind of getting to know professors there, getting your foot in the door, just, you know, networking. Uh, they can give you scholarships just based on the kind of work and the contributions that you do to give back to a college that's already given, giving you so much. So. Yeah. Awesome. Other than scholarships, you've got uh, student loans. I mean, student loans are a big form of college funding. And, you know, we as financial planners, as financial advisors, Ultimately, you want to see our younger investors and the future generation out of student loan debt as quickly as possible. I, mm -hmm. I think that's very important. 
but investing in your education for many, for most probably, does require some level of student loans. Yes. Now there's what to remember about them is you want to minimize them, right? You don't necessarily want to be taking out the max. You don't necessarily want to be just overdoing it, but student loans are, it is an investment. When you, when you go to college, when you're getting your education, your higher education, whether it's undergraduate, master's degree, you are, uh, you're investing. You're investing in your education and that, that payoff down the road is going to be exponential. It's going to be, you know, in the short term, a lot more than what you could get out of the stock market, a lot more than what you could get out of a Roth IRA, investing in your education, as long as you pick the right major, something that's going to be applicable to the job world, something, something you like, something you like, something mm -hmm. that is going to transfer, you know, you don't want to be getting degrees in left-handed puppetry. You want to be... Unless that's your thing. Unless that's your thing. Right. Now, right. I, and, and so it's funny you say that because I was thinking that exact same thing in that I believe that the education system has done a horrible job of educating young people about the return on that investment mm -hmm. and that there are jobs. The job market, the value of labor is determined by supply and demand. Mm -hmm. Some people don't think it's fair, but it is basic economics. That's mm -hmm. what determines how much people get paid. Mm -hmm. And there are majors or there are specialties, master's degrees that cost $60,000 a year when you go into an industry where you might only be making $30,000 a year. And unfortunately, those education institutions blame the economy for the cost of their education, not themselves. So one of the things that I'm passionate about personally is really understanding the value of your education because it doesn't make sense to spend $60,000 a year for three or four years on a on a career that's going to pay you thirty thousand, right? Um, because quite frankly, it will take the joy away from your passion because you'll be drowning in debt. Mm -hmm. You will be enslaved mm -hmm. by it. Right. So, so I really, really, really um, can't emphasize that mm -hmm. enough. But uh, but to know that there are those resources, there are institutions out there. Make sure, you know, even if your heart you have your heart set on a certain school. That piece of paper, that designation, can be had from anywhere, and I, I, you know the cost of that. I think is just so important to know and understand. Mm -hmm. Going in and hold yourself accountable to what right. you're getting into. Mm -hmm. Right. College choice is very important when it comes to funding specifically. There's going to be a big difference between a private out-of-state college cost versus an in-state public university. So. College choice is, is really everything when it comes to specifically the funding piece. Agreed. Yeah, and, and lastly, to close that loop, just so everybody knows, I was a philosophy major. I joke and say, as a philosophy major, I got a BA and BS. <laughs> <laughs> but here he is now. So exactly. Yeah, yeah so out. as a history and business minor, but quite frankly, a philosophy major isn't among the most lucrative careers. A lot of people go on to become attorneys. It's a great uh, prerequisite for, for, for law. But the bottom line is this, I was fortunate enough to know that I had a job after I graduated. Right. So I want to use that as the entree into, if you have that future set, a mentor of mine told me, once I knew I had a job, because I had an internship as a sophomore, I went to school in New York City, got an internship as a sophomore, and a mentor said, you got a job after college, study what you want, because you'll never get that opportunity again. Right. So having a job secured and employment secured after college really can give you a little bit more flexibility, a lot more flexibility. And you both secured employment before you had graduated here at KPP. Um, we're proud of our intern program. Ben, you came up in that, Miles, you did too. So talk about that. What did you both do while you were in school to recognize opportunities that are out there and ultimately become employed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, so um, I would say Western was the biggest help, hands down, with getting me motivated and out there to get to be in the professional world and make sure that at the end of the day, why we go to school, why we're here for four years, we're here to get a job. Um, that's kind of the motto in the business business college at Western. And I'll never forget, uh, I took a class with Dr. Rhodes, shout out Dr. Rhodes, uh, and there's like a four, there's a four step uh, get out of your comfort zone list and he makes you do it every single semester and it goes through tiers So say the first week you have to go a day without your phone Next week you have to take your TV out of your room 
And by the fourth week, you were forced to go out and you were forced to go to a professional conference, which Western um, is kind enough to host. And I actually was going out there one weekend, uh, took a took a, a Saturday off and went out to the Nicely Center down in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Um, and was out there and I requested a mentor because this was my first professional conference and I had never really kind of dipped my feet in that water. So I was out there talking to other people in the finance world, uh, business data analytics world, and I ended up stumbling upon Rob, who's uh, the CEO here at Kentucky Planning Partners. And we just started having a conversation and I had known Ben uh, through Greek life at Western and they invited me just to sit down and have a conversation at lunch. And then from there, it was just, I'm um, just getting to know them and ended up writing them just a handwritten note just to let them know that I was thankful for lunch and hopefully that we can keep in touch. And that was something that the, that the business college at Western was so prominent about and made sure that it was a point to make sure that you act in a professional manner you go out there and you make sure that you are actively pursuing a future beyond your four mm -hmm. years here. And I actually met yeah. Rob, ironically enough, at the same conference. Right. So uh, Years before. Years I mean, before, yeah. yeah. A couple years before. First here on a field trip that Western, again, and Dr. Rose provided. Mm -hmm. So the biggest thing is, is being able to get out there. It's not just about the classroom in college. It's about networking it's about especially in the finance industry in our Absolutely. world you kind of got to get creative with how you start your career sometimes it might be in sales sometimes it might be in the insurance world sometimes mm -hmm. you know it might be in the independent world it just depends on what you find but you've got to go out there and find it mm -hmm. it's so important to do try all things because i always like to remind young people trying everything will help you find what you don't want to do you might think that marketing or advertising or sales is this lifestyle, but once you get involved and you see what it actually entails, you, you really learn what you don't want to do. And also it opens your expanse, your horizon to find out what you do want to do. So um, I'll tell you a quick story. My first day as an intern, so I started as an intern when I was 19. Mm -hmm. I was in New York City and a lady, her name was Kelly, gave me a big binder. It's about a three inch thick binder of paperwork to go make a copy of. And I looked at this binder and I thought, oh, all right, I'll see you next week. <laughs> and I went to the copy machine and I had to take each piece of paper out. I opened up the top of the printer, put it on the paint glass, closed the printer, pressed the print button, flipped it over. And I was about an hour into it, maybe 15 pages in. And an old gentleman walked in, looked like he had been with the company for 100 years walked in with three pieces of paper and said, you mind if I butt in on this? And I said, sure, I'm going to be here a while. He put his three pieces of paper in the feeder at the top of the printer, pressed print, and they fed right oh. through. And I thought, well, that is genius. <laughs> right. So so there's a there's a learning curve for all of us. Uh, so And you guys have just knocked the cover off the ball. And um, Well, the, the beautiful thing about internships nowadays, in our experience especially, is that most of them will entail something better than just making copies. Right. So. Yeah, but I will say this, <laughs> making copy, that was a great, that was a humbling experience. Right. But no, you're right. So so um, we're obviously the internship at KPP is the, the creme de la creme of all internships. I mean, this is an unbiased perspective. <laughs> but, uh, but no, we're, we're so grateful for WKU. So let's talk about Western Kentucky for a moment. Uh, you've mentioned Dr. Rhodes several times. I hope to meet this Dr. Rhodes sometime. If, if he's been as influential on you two, and had an impact on your lives. We all have those professors or those teachers, those people, and it sounds like Dr. Rhodes is one of them. So, Dr. Rhodes, you know, most teachers say, I got into it if I could help one. Well, you've helped two here, so. Right. And I'm many sure, more. I'm sure oh, there absolutely. are many more. Uh, shout out to you. So, mm -hmm. talk about WKU, guys. Why should all of our listeners' children want to go through to be, to be a hilltopper? Well, it was, for Miles and I both, just an amazing experience, mm -hmm. you know, Whatever department you're in, if you're in the business college, if you're in the Ogden College of Science and Engineering, mm -hmm. if you're in the Arts College, there's so many different areas that Western offers that is affordable and Absolutely. that does set you up for success after college. Mm -hmm. And the experience on the Hill was just tremendous. The people there, I think, are different. The professors, the people you interact with. I, I met my best friends there through class and through extracurricular activities. Greek life, you name it, um, all the different areas that Western offers just gave me a, a lifetime experience that was 
just tremendous. Absolutely. I think that one of the biggest things that Western provides, and I think that has made all the difference in my time there and the rest of the time that I plan to serve there is the fact that it is so easy to get involved beyond the classroom. And I think that that has developed me and my personality the most. Um, not to say that the classroom isn't important, but um, there's a there's an extra part of becoming a professional and kind of getting started on your career to the point where you have to learn how to deal with all different types of people. And I think Western brings a very diverse set of uh, people that go there. And that's not just in the business college. Uh, I know people in every single college there, and it's just, it's very easy for all of us to get together, um, disagree, agree on all types of things. I was involved in a handful of extracurricular organizations, still am. Um, and the fact that it's also not a huge university is, is great. It's, it's not by any means a tiny university, but it's not some astronomical number that you're going to feel like you are one grain of sand in the ocean, mm -hmm. you know, and it, and it makes you feel like you are, you are this almost a center of attention. I mean, I don't think I've had one class where it's been a lecture hall other than that. I mean, all classes are 20, 30, and I feel like I get the attention and, and the learning capabilities that I, that I really need. So. Yes. And a quick blurb specifically on the, the finance department within the business college. That's our line of work for anyone interested in going into finance and being an advisor down the road and getting into our line of work. Uh, the, the finance department is Absolutely. top in the region. It is CFP board certified. So when I got my CFP de designation, I was able to go right into the exam because Western's program was registered with the CFP board and it hit on all those areas in my classes like retirement planning, insurance planning, tax planning, education planning. Mm -hmm. It hit on all those areas that the CFP board requires. So it, it is focusing on getting students into financial planning. The professional side like we talked about in networking, but also that education piece, top in the region. Mm -hmm. So it was yeah. very important in my professional life. Well, you both represent WKU extremely well. And at full disclosure, KPP is not affiliated with Western Kentucky University. We're just extremely impressed by the quality of the character of the individuals, the work ethic. We've interviewed some, some other people from there for internships and just, just so impressed by, by how well WKU has prepared mm -hmm. you and, and everybody we've met. So, so to recap the conversation, uh, the competitive landscape of getting into college, it, um, you two worked your tails off. You worked hard. You recognized how important it was. Those four years of high school are fleeting and you had mentors and people to help you recognize how fleeting but yet how important they are. So kudos to those people that loved on you, cared about you, and coached you through those years. But also you saw the door and you walked through it. You can lead a horse to water but you can't make them drink. So you should be very proud of yourselves for seizing and capitalizing on, on those opportunities and listening, listening to your mentors. College funding, you both graduated without debt, and that was because, again, you leveraged the resources that the university had given you. You took it upon yourselves. You shouldered the responsibility mm -hmm. with college funding, and that was motivating to not have $100,000 of debt on your shoulder. <laughs> right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, so you did that, and again, you saw the opportunity, and you seized it yourselves. You held yourselves accountable. I love it. Third, how'd you get a job? Well, you, what did you do? Did what you were told, quite right. frankly. Right. When yeah. people said, go to the conference, you went to it, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. You went to the, the resources, you put on a suit, and you went and had the conversation. And to all the young people out there, if you're in college and you're looking for job opportunities, it's amazing how few requests we get. To, um, and the ones that we do get, when we say, hey, how'd you find out about it? I just Googled the best financial advisory firms in town and I knew I wanted to work for you, right? <laughs> so there's something to be said for taking that initiative, having the guts to go do it, and you guys did. And lastly, WKU. So um, again, we're not affiliated with WKU at KPP, but uh, are just so impressed by you guys. Congratulations you. On, on starting an incredible career 
um, in financial services and just an incredible shout out to WKU for preparing you guys and mm-hmm. your pride in the school. It's, uh, it's, it, it's a bit, um, you know, I think it's rubbed off on me. <laughs> I've never stepped, I've never stepped foot on the, the, the campus, but you should, it's beautiful. We'll, we'll get you down to a football game. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. In the fall. When they, right. when they right. back. Right. Basketball game, maybe. Yeah. It's opening up, so. Well, I'd love to. Yeah, I'd love awesome. to. Well, well, anything else, guys? No. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you all for listening. And we uh, we love talking about this sort of thing. It, Miles and I are very passionate about it. And for anyone out there, uh, parents, grandparents, young kids in college, we hope that this uh, is very beneficial to you all. We hope it's valuable. And if you ever have any questions on any of it, if you ever want to talk more about some of these topics, if you ever want to plan for college, we do a lot of that in our day-to-day work, meeting with clients. College funding is is a big topic that we talk about in mm-hmm. many meetings. So give us a call at KPP. Our number is 502-394-0400. As Kyle always says, at the end of every one, we're located in the uh, heart of Louisville's East End at the top of the Flash Cube building, uh, right next to the PF Chang's at the corner of Hurstport and Shelbyville Road. So reach out to us, check us out on our website. We've got tons of good resources, tons of good videos. Uh, like our Facebook page, and we'll see you next week. So, awesome. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Great.